Shalom and welcome to Once Upon a Soul, an exploration of 68 unique stories inspired by the teachings of Rabbi Usher Freund Zatzal. This podcast series is sponsored in loving memory of Mrs. Clary Safrin, Alea HaShalom. May the neshama of Rivka Sara Basra Yeshua have an aliyah. It's such a privilege, it's mamish such a privilege to embark on this new project, this new series together with all of you. I want to just begin by thanking you for devoting your precious time to journeying with me on Be'ezus Hashem, what's going to be a remarkable expedition, B'siyata Deshmaya, something really unique and valuable and precious. Be'ezus Hashem, something we're all going to be able to take a whole lot out from with Hashem's help. So Be'ezus Hashem, just to begin by way of introduction to the introduction in this particular episode, the first episode in the series will be an introduction to the stories, an introduction to the Tzaddik or Basher Freund whose teachings inspired these stories. I'd just like to begin with a few technical notes. So Be'ezus Hashem, the general framework of these recordings will be to keep them around 10 to 15 minutes, 20 minutes max on average. I'll begin each episode by reading and translating one of the stories, and then I'll offer a few insights into the themes and the concepts woven into these incredible tales to offer a window into their depth and enable us to draw strength and guidance from these remarkable revelations, Besiata Deshmaya. So, like I mentioned, I'd like to begin with an introduction to the stories, but even before we get into the stories themselves, I want to say a few words about the tzaddik whose teachings, messages, and spirit inspired these stories, the tzaddik, Rabbi Asher Freund, S'chus Yagen So I myself am still in the process of learning more about Rabbi Asher in the context of this project and in reading these stories and getting to know a little bit just some of the chevra that were connected with him. So I'd like to share a little bit about what I've learned over the past couple of days and weeks. Rabbi Usher, as he was known by his Talmidim, Rabbi Asher, was born in 1910 and lived in Yerushalayim until his passing in 2003. A descendant from the Yid HaKadosh of Pshisch and of Aaron HaGadol of Karlin, Reb Usher had close ties with the world of Hasidus and was very influenced by those teachings, particularly the teachings of Rabbi Nachman of Breslov, Schusi Aganaleinu. Over the years, he became known, to the few who knew, as a tzaddik nister, a person who was proficient in Kabbalah and whose personal avodah Hashem was awe-inspiring. But with all of his tahara and elevation, Rabbi Asher remained keenly attuned to the needs of others. And from a very young age, he was always looking for ways to help anyone in need, whether financially or in any other way that he could help them. Eventually, Rabbi Asher founded a large chesed organization, which is still around today, called Yad Ezra, which was the first organization to start delivering anonymous packages to those who couldn't afford food for Shabbos and Yantif. Rabbi Usher's chesed initiatives extended to his hashpa, which was a true Torah's chesed. He guided his talmidim, an eclectic and diverse group of yidin from all around the world, with love and care, gently guiding them with his advice and encouragement. Rabbi Usher made himself accessible to men and women alike, devoting his time to sharing his depth and insight with weary souls across the globe. And we have the privilege of this very podcast series being dedicated in loving memory of Mrs. Clary Safran, Allah HaShalem, an extremely special woman and a tremendous balas chesed in her own right, who had herself a close personal connection with the tzaddik. And this really was Rabbi Usher, a shining beacon of light for so many. A tzaddik, a makubal who mined the depths of Kabbalah to reveal Hashem's love, his constant presence, and his desire for a relationship with each and every Jew. With his teachings on Bittal, on Emunah Pshuta, on going out into nature like the breast liver Hasidim to speak to Hashem in our own words, his influence was felt by many thousands and his spirit still guides them today. To help us get a little bit of a better picture, a closer view, of this tzaddik, I wanted to read a few words from one of Rabbi Usher's letters that really seems to capture Rabbi Usher's personality. And I want to thank my Rebbe of Moshe Weinberger Shlita for pointing me toward these amazing letters and toward this letter in particular. And here the tzaddik seems to be writing to a Yid who's struggling with some kind of tremendous challenge of some sort. 
And he writes over here, Just like in every war, There are times, That one of the sides feels that they're passing through an enormously dark cloud, a challenge, a frightening void of vacancy and bewilderment. So it is in the same way with each and every individual. But Melchamta in his own personal struggles and challenges in these wars. A person can come to such a situation where it appears like there's no hope anymore. But the truth is, he says here, He says, this circumstance, being in such a situation, is actually a setting, a time, an opportunity that's prepared for the person to give to contribute some deep kind of inner work to awaken what's referred to here as a hisoyru shalmata an awakening from below from the lowest kind of place. For what purpose? to reveal that a Kodesh Baruch Hu is found even there. And that this person can make his voice heard from one end of the world to the other, Lamar screaming out, Hashem Hu Hu Elikim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is our God. And to address Hashem directly, to say, Hashem, you are our God. Why have you hidden your face from me? You are here. You are even here. Vezehu, and he says that this is Tanugai Ha'amiti. This is HaKadosh Baruch Hu's primary pleasure that Hashem gets when even when we're in the dark and even when we're going through challenges and even when we experience that moment in our battle that appears to be hopeless, completely hopeless, when we're able to call out from there and we don't lose touch and we remember that there's no such thing as despair in the world and we don't give up and we recognize that Kodesh Baruch Hu is constantly holding out his hand if we're only brave enough to take it. This is HaKadosh Baruch Hu's primary pleasure. And it was for this kind of situation, for a Jew calling out from the depth, like Rabbi Nachman says in Sikha Saran, that the main thing is mi beten sha'ol shivati. For a Jew to call out like Yona did from the, from the belly of the whale, when everything seems hopeless, when we're closed in on all sides. It was for this that HaKadosh Baruch Hu brought the whole world into existence. An amazing few lines. And then, when you turn the page over here, he writes, In order for a person to get to this kind of level, Rabbi Usher says, We need every day to strengthen ourselves. And even many times a day. It's as if we almost need to start fresh, brand new. Every single day, not to give up and not to despair, no matter what we're going through, no matter what kind of struggle and darkness and confusion and bewilderment. This is the way it is for a person who chooses to live a life of faith, that a person who walks with emuna and doesn't give up and keeps on holding tight to the faith that Hashem exists, even in the belly of the whale, it is certain that with the passage of time, this person will ultimately achieve that hidden goodness that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has prepared for those that are able to find the strength to begin again and never to give up. For all of his faithful servants, and at that point, a person realizes Fortunate is my portion, in this world, and in the next. And here we come to the end of this segment of the letter, where Abu Usher writes such a beautiful expression, such a beautiful few words that really seem to capture the incredible spirit of this Mekubal, of this hidden Sadiq. He says, He says, I request 
from the recipient of this letter, from the one that this letter is being addressed to, that he should strengthen himself very much, and he shouldn't be worried at all. And in this way, he should calm the members of his family. And here he says, you can put this on your fridge, a bumper sticker on your car, because there's no place for worry. But what there is space for, what there is place, is for tfila and tachnunim, supplications, before the shemea tfilas kalpe, before the one who listens to the tfilas, to the prayers of all human beings. Hamemalu Mishalis Lev B'nai Yisrael, who fills the requests of his beloved Jewish nation. Kamoshenemar, as the Pasuk says, Karev Hashem L'chol Koyrav, HaKadosh Baruch is close to all those who call out to him. L'chol Asher Yikra'uhu Be'emes, to all of those who call to him in truth. What an incredible letter. What an incredible chizuk. There's no room for worry. But there is room for tefillah. Amazing. So here you see from the tzaddik's own words, what kind of incredible chizik was flowing forth from the neshama of Rabbi Usher, Rabbi Usher Freund Zetzal, this hidden tzaddik, who gave such incredible guidance and strength to those that had the privilege of connecting with him. And among those who had that privilege, who had that schus, was Rabbi Yahu Safran, the beloved husband of Mrs. Clary Safran, Allah Shalom Yibadu bin Chaim Lechaim, who we mentioned earlier, in whose memory we have the schus of dedicating this series. And Rabbi Yahu writes in an article that he published in the Baltimore Jewish Life. He writes over here a personal story with Rabbi Usher that really provides further clarity into Rabbi Usher's perspective on life and the way that he held on and lived with Amunah Pshuta like he saw it clearly with his own eyes. And Rabbi Yahu writes like this. He says, Many years ago, I sat at Rabbi Usher's holy Shabbos table, and I reminded him of something he said about a particularly difficult event many years earlier. He listened closely, looking at me with his piercing and shining eyes. And he, and he talked ahead. Rabbi Usher had these clear blue eyes, something remarkable to look at. And suddenly he said, Ani amarti davar? I said such a thing? Yes, I said, you said that. Rabbi Usher responded, you think that I am speaking? My voice is simply a kli, a vessel, through which whatever God wants me to convey comes through. He reiterated, you think I am speaking? I say nothing. Hashem sends me a message which He wants me to utter through my vocal cords, but it is not me. This bitl, this sense of nullification, this sense of identification with the chilek aloka mimal, with this portion of the divine that each of us carry within, this was a benchmark of Rabbi Usher's hashkafa and enables us to catch another glimpse of the way that this tzaddik was and the messages that he sought to spread through the world. And so what a schus it is for us to be connected to this tzaddik and to his messages May his merits stand by us and by all of Am Yisrael. Now that we have a bit of a portrait, a picture of the Tzaddik or Busha Freund Zatzal, let's turn to the stories. I first heard about these stories from Rav Weinberger Shlita, and I eventually got my hands on a PDF electronic version, which by the look of it is fairly unremarkable. It looks to be some kind of photocopy of a notebook that just has three words printed on the cover, nothing else. Shishim Ushmaina Maisias. That's all it says. 68 stories. And it looks like there are some like black splotches on the cover. And that's it. There's no name of an author, not on the cover and not on the inside. And the only thing in the Kuntris, other than the stories themselves, is a handwritten letter with what looks like an illustration of a flower drawn next to the text. And the letter essentially says that these stories are inspired by Rabbi Usher. It attributes these stories to a Talmud of Rabbi Usher. And that's it. And then the stories begin. These 68 stories. Now, the stories are very short. They're about 10 to 15 lines of text each, just a paragraph each. Very short stories. And 
they'll speak for themselves. There's really nothing quite like them, other than Rabbi Nachman Sipur Um But in their brevity and in the way that they capture intensely profound ideas, they're unique. They're completely singular. They're completely unique. They're original. They're imaginative. They're poetic. They're beautiful. And I knew that I wanted to do something with them because they're such useful kalim. They're such amazing tools for communicating some of the most foundational teachings of Panimiya Satayra, of Taras Hasidas, of Taras HaNefesh. So when I was preparing for this series, I needed to find out who wrote them. And so I did a little bit of digging and I managed to find out the name of this very special Yid whose neshama served as the channel to bring these stories down into this world. I contacted him and he was very gracious with his time. And as might be expected from a person who could write such stories, he wanted his identity to remain completely, completely hidden. But he did confirm that he was very close with Rabbi Usher, extremely, extremely close, and that these stories are either direct or indirect reflections of Rabbi Usher's teachings. He gave us his blessing for this project, and it's a true honor and privilege for me to be able to have some tiny part in bringing these stories to the English-speaking public. So, with those words of introduction, Be'ezus Hashem, we conclude the opening episode of Once Upon a Soul. And next week, B'Siyat HaDashmaya will begin the journey through the actual stories, one at a time. It's really something to look forward to. It really genuinely is. It's something remarkable. It's something special. And B'Siyat HaDashmaya, we hope that these stories will serve as good tools to bring these messages of Rabbi Usher and his Talmidim down into our hearts and into our souls. In the way of Yadata Hayyoyim, we shouldn't just intellectually know a lot of important concepts, but the main thing is Vashivoisa We should be able to bring it down into our hearts, into the realm of feeling, so that together we can link arms and march toward the Geula, the Siata Deshmaya. Thank you so much to all of you for listening. Thank you for being a part of it. And if you can please share the link to subscribe to Eilecha, to all of those who might be interested in joining us for this journey, that would be a major help. So we really appreciate it and looking forward to beginning this remarkable journey next week with Hashem's help. All the best.